Back in 1970, things looked great. The muscle car craze, which the 1964 GTO started, was in full swing. For 1970, horsepower displacement were up, and there was a muscle car to fit everyone's taste from all the different auto manufacturers. Unfortunately, high insurance costs and legislative action were catching up with the muscle car. The low performance error was right around the corner, and by 1975, performance in most cars would die. Since its first model year, 1965, the Chevelle SS had grown in popularity. By the late 1960s, the Chevelle SS, with its strong, faithful following, was one of the most popular muscle cars. For 1970, even better things were in store for the Chevelle SS. Due to an internal edict at GM, only full-size cars and the Corvette could have engines with displacements larger than 400 cubic inches. Because of the edict, the 1965 to 1969 Chevelle SS only came equipped with a 396 cubic inch big block V8. However, by the late 1960s, Chevrolet did get around this edict by allowing its central office production order, or COPO for short, program to offer its full range of big block 427 cubic inch V8s, including the L88, to customers who special ordered COPO Camaros, Chevelles, and Novas. Though COPO allowed the production of some legendary 427 powered Chevrolet muscle cars, Total production was very low. Only a few in the know racers and performance dealers, such as Yanko, used this program to get around the GM edict. GM decided to lift the edict for the 1970 model year, and Chevrolet's response was the introduction of the 454 cubic inch V8 as a 1970 Chevelle SS option. The 454 V8 is a member of the Chevrolet Mark IV big block V8 engine family. The first Mark IV engine was a 396 V8, which first saw duty during the 1965 model year. In 1966, the Mark IV 427 V8 joined Chevrolet's engine lineup alongside the 396. For 1970, the 454 was not only new to the Chevelle SS, but also to Chevrolet. The legendary 427 big block V8 was the largest displacement Chevy V8 in 1969. For 1970, Chevrolet decided to increase the 427's stroke, which increased the displacement to 454 cubic inches. The 4.25 inch bore and 4.0 inch stroke of the 454 are numbers that bring a smile to any muscle car fan's face. Chevy fans at the time cheered the increase in displacement, since larger displacement meant more horsepower and more torque. Chevy provided two separate SS options for the 1970 Chevelle, the Z25 SS396 option and the Z15 SS454 option. With the SS396 option, one could choose from two Mark IV 396 cubic inch V8s, the L34, which was 350 horsepower, and the L78, which was 375 horsepower. Chevy's little secret concerning the 396 for 1970 was that it no longer displaced 396 cubic inches, but rather 402. Chevy added a .030 inch overbore on the 396 block, pushing its displacement up to 402 cubic inches. For some unknown reason, Chevy decided it was best to call the 1970 402 a 396. The SS 454 or Z15, a mid-year option, gave the 1970 Chevelle SS buyer two powerhouse 454 V8s to choose from, the LS5 and LS6. The LS5 454 was rated at 360 horsepower in the 1970 Chevelle SS but 390 horsepower in the 1970 Corvette. The reality is that the LS5 in the 1970 Chevelle SS is identical to the 1970 Corvette's LS5. The 1970 Corvette was slated to have a 465 horsepower LS7 454 as its top engine option. However, Chevy changed its mind and canceled the LS7 before it was produced. The 1970 Corvette was then stuck with the LS5 as its top engine option. 
the LS6 with its 11.25 to 1 compression ratio was factory rated by Chevy at 450 horsepower and a whopping 500 pound-feet of torque. Helping to make this impressive power were solid valve lifters, a forged steel crank, TRW forged aluminum pistons, forged connecting rods, an aluminum intake manifold, and an 800 CFM Holley four-barrel carburetor. Getting the power to the wheels was the job of two available transmissions, a Muncie M22 Rock Crusher four-speed manual transmission and a three-speed turbo hydraulic 400 automatic transmission. A few different performance rear axle options were available for the 1970 Chevelle SS LS6. The most performance oriented being a Posi Traction 410 rear axle. On paper, the LS6 was the most powerful production engine during the muscle car golden era. The Chevelle SS LS6 consistently obtained 13 second range quarter mile times in magazine tests back in the day, which is extremely impressive when you consider a LS6 Chevelle SS has a weight of around 4,000 pounds with driver and fuel. The fastest LS6 quarter mile time recorded by an auto magazine back in the day was in the November 1969 issue of Carcraft magazine. Carcraft rocketed the bone stock 1970 Chevelle SS LS6 through the quarter mile in 13.12 seconds at 107.01 miles per hour. The 1970 Chevelle SS LS6 was also no slouch around the turns with its heavy-duty F41 suspension, which not only included heavy-duty suspension components, but also 14 by 7 inch wheels and F70 tires. Even though it was a mid-year option, the pricey 1970 Chevelle SS LS6 454 sold pretty well for a low production car. With 4,475 units sold, this was out of a total of 62,372 1970 Chevelle SS's produced. Helping sales was the stylish new look of the Chevelle SS for 1970. It was essentially a carryover Chevelle body style that was first released for 1968, but did have a new front and rear end design. The new front and rear styling provided a very muscular look that matched the performance under the hood. Even the chrome tip dual exhaust added to the style of the 1970 Chevelle SS. The 1970 Chevelle SS 454 could be ordered in two body styles, the two-door coupe and convertible. The real news for the 1970 Chevelle SS was the new optional cow induction hood, the ZL2 option which had a solenoid operated flap that opened to provide cool air for the carburetor via the air cleaner assembly. By 1970 most muscle cars were leaving the dealer lots loaded with many factory options. A far cry from the stripper muscle cars of a few years prior. The Chevelle SS LS6 with its many available options was no different. It was not cheap it started at around $4,500 and the price increased as more options were added. Back in 1970, the average family income was around $10,000, making a Chevelle SS LS6 454 an expensive purchase for the average buyer. However, it was worth every penny. The LS6 454 returned again in 1971, but it was only available in the Corvette where it produced 425 horsepower. The horsepower loss was due to a loss in compression. All GM engines in 1971 suffered a substantial compression ratio drop in order to meet new federally mandated unleaded fuel standards. The party was now over and the new race for auto manufacturers was to see how fast high performance engines could be detuned or eliminated. After 1971 the LS6 454 left and never returned. And soon after, the 1973 Chevelle SS became the last Chevelle to wear the SS emblems. Every once in a great while, a freak of nature occurs. Something so different from the average or norm that it blatantly stands out. 
in 1970, the Chevelle SS LS6 was just that, a freak of nature. It was the complete apex of an era of skyrocketing horsepower ratings when it seemed like the sky was the limit. Looking back now, it's quite clear the 1970 Chevelle SS LS6 was the Mount Everest of the muscle car golden era.